top five. Welcome back to my Yoki Up channel. Welcome back to another vlog by your ultimate fave. I am so tired. Sheesh, I am tired. It has been an overwhelming couple of weeks. And yeah, I'm just going to start off by saying I'm sick and tired. I am tired. I'm sick. And when I'm not sick, I'm tired. I am sick and tired. Anyway, faves, welcome back to another vlog by your ultimate fave. Now, I have heard all your cries about hating my short mini vlogs and that's real that's real like so i have decided that i'm going to go back to long format vlogs just over the next two days to show you guys what i'm getting up to i do have a jam-packed two days and i thought what better way than to vlog the experience but to all my faves who have been crying about the fact that they hate my mini vlogs i am so sorry soz soz babe I'm so sorry about people who miss the long format vlogs. Um, I've taken everything into consideration. I'm really trying different things and I'm trying to accommodate people who don't like the long format videos. I'm gonna take you through with me for the next two days. So we're just gonna start off by kind of checking in how everything is going, how I'm feeling, what the plan is for today. So as you guys can see, I am super barefaced and that's because I've removed my lashes and I've, I obviously don't have a wig on, but we're going to be doing all of that today. I'm going to be getting my reinstall of my lashes with Cine Zippo, uh Beauty Bar. And then Gum was going to be coming later to install my wig. And reason being for that is because, great news, by the time this vlog drops, you will have seen the content. I have been selected to be the MC, so the Master of Ceremonies, for the Kellogg's flourish fest which is gonna be happening tomorrow and i just want to say i just want to say i never in a million years ever imagined this trajectory of my career i think i knew that i wanted to be a social media influencer i knew that i wanted to get into the entertainment space but never in a million years did i dream this big and now that my dreams are just becoming bigger than my imagination it's very hard for me to fathom and accept and you know kind of be in the moment so yeah guys i'm gonna be the mc for the kellogg's flash fest which is going to be happening tomorrow which is thursday the 18th so so today we're going to be doing just kind of the preps uh i'm going to be taking you guys with me to go get an outfit for tomorrow i'm going to be taking you guys with me for lashes and then there's a couple of you know unboxings that i want to do i did get myself <laughs> been going on with me as of late but i've been telling myself spoil yourself spoil yourself spoil yourself spoil yourself so i've been having this deep rooted energy and the need to spoil myself as of late for some strange reason i've been working super hard it's been taking what felt like forever to pull the brand and now that the brand is paying off in itself i just took the time to really kind of self-indulge and you know make myself happy in the ways or the things that i've been desiring so i've been going on a shopping spree baby i i remember what i said to you guys about luxury unboxings i just decided to take a step back on luxury unboxings because i felt like it was tone deaf I still share the same sentiments about that and I will obviously just do like a mini unbox as part of the vlog but the whole sit down luxury unboxings for me are just um I don't know they are not I know that my audience does love that but they are not something that are of true focus for my audience my audience just loves seeing the real mundane things so i will show you guys what i bought later today but i just wanted to touch base with you guys let you know where i've been mentally where i've been career wise and i've honestly been in a really really good place you know i've developed myself as you know an mc a host and it's been amazing to work with the brands that i've been working with as of late i mean just in the beginning of the first quarter of the year alone, I've worked with Johnny Walker, Coke, Showmax, Kellogg's. Um, what else have I worked with? I've worked with so many brands that it's actually kind of 
it has me stunned every time I think about it. And I just want to give a big shout out to the agencies who have entrusted me with their brands, who have entrusted me with their marketing strategies. And I'm just happy to be here, man. So, yeah, that's that's where I've been mentally. Where I've been is my focus has truly been on the career and the brand aspect of Naledi M. And I know that I, it's obviously fallen short in terms of my content creation. But you guys know me. I'm very personal about my YouTube channel. I'm still not comfortable with getting a video editor. I'm still not comfortable with relinquishing that um, control. Hopefully if I do find like a video editor that I can trust, there are some video editors that I've tried using in the past and they really just didn't come through for me. I know that every time that I suggest someone to do an intro, people keep suggesting the same people and I just want you guys to know it's not falling on deaf ears. I have reached out to certain video editors in the past and I've been very, very disappointed and that is why I just don't feel comfortable as of yet getting a video editor. I'm still very comfortable with doing things myself but the one thing that is is a priority to me right now is obviously changing up my intro so I've been looking around shopping around the last video editor that I had Lindo uh, I haven't been able to get a hold of him I've been trying to get a hold of him for months now so it's very unfortunate because he made a really really good intro and if I could get a hold of him again I would definitely reach out and ask him to do it but now I am obviously looking for an alternative yo guys Emotionally and romantically, relationshipally. And I tell you, <laughs> I'm telling you that I'm single. <laughs> I am so single right now. Um, there is, there is like someone in my life that I'm really enjoying talking to. Uh, I'm, I'm slowly trying to adjust getting back into the dating scene. I mean, it's so difficult for me now. It's more difficult than it's ever been because I put the whole love, love element of my life in the backseat. That took a backseat. My physical, um, my physical well-being, my money took like... A front seat and I focused on all of that and now that everything is just kind of becoming very harmonious and free-flowing I do find myself kind of yearning for that companionship so there is someone that I've been talking to and I really enjoy his company but for certain reasons um, I can't pursue that relationship nothing bad nothing bad but I just I just can't pursue that relationship but I will tell you guys the story time when I've recovered because I really 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 I really do like him and it's very evident that the energy is pretty much the same between us but anyway guess on us moving on from that I've just been in a really good place, guys. And, oh, another thing that people have been asking me, why haven't I been doing? TV recaps. <sighs> now. Now. Oh. Okay, the wheel's changing. Now, you guys know me and how much I love TV recaps. But as of late, I've been receiving a lot of what I feel is... Is criticism about my recaps that that I don't know if it comes from a place of like constructive criticism, but I think it comes from a place of people just not just not wanting to see me win. Like like in the sense that people are becoming very snarky. And you know, my TV recaps when I started doing them, the whole idea was just to be completely completely cutthroat about the reality of what we're watching however i do realize that some people obviously don't take kindly to that um i think a couple of weeks ago i had an interaction with one of the housewives on twitter where you know she basically just alluded to the fact that i will never be a reunion host because i'm biased which is true <laughs> Which is true, I am biased, but that's essentially what TV recaps are. I think people are confusing the whole aspect of what a TV recap is and thinking that being in the moment of a TV recap means that it's going to be the same. And I've realized that people do this to me quite, quite often, where 
if I'm very loud on my YouTube videos, then someone will be like, oh, she can't be on radio because she's so loud. Everybody thinks that I don't know how to act in certain instances in certain spaces. And I realize that it's, it's not people thinking I don't know how to act. It's people just not wanting. They just don't want me in that space. And I'm cool with that. And to be really honest, um, when that interaction happened, uh, it caused me to kind of take a step back and say, okay, cool. Uh, I've been doing TV recaps like this for a long time. I've been very cutthroat and very ruthless about TV recaps, but I think I was very taken aback when someone basically alluded to the fact that it'll you will never be this because this is the the feelings that you share about me and i need you guys to understand that when i'm doing tv recaps as passionate as i am when i tell a story and stuff like that i am telling it based off of what i'm being exposed to and in some instances i'm paid to do tv recaps in some instances i do them out of the freedom of me really enjoying that reality show but then when that interaction happened i kind of took a step back because i felt like okay this is how you feel this is great and stuff but um, I then had to reflect on whether everything that I've said about every cast member, about every franchise, about every reality show you can think of, I then started like really reflecting on, am I hurting people's feelings? Because I didn't like that. I didn't like that. Like for me, I've, I've called out so many women, but I've never had any bad interactions with some of the housewives. You know what I mean? So, so when, when that all happened, I then just wanted to reflect and figure out like, mm, uh, maybe, maybe there's something I need to change in my tone, in my delivery, because essentially it's meant to be entertainment. So it's meant to be sharing what people really think in the most, in the most like, you know, in the most organic way possible. If I'm watching that episode at that time and I'm reviewing it, I'm reviewing it in the energy of someone who's watching what I'm being exposed to. Now, I know better than anyone that reality TV is scripted and I know better than anyone that um, everybody can choose whoever they want to like and want to dislike. But when that whole interaction went down, I just, initially I was, I wasn't moved. I really wasn't moved. But then, but then I was just like, uh uh, I don't, I, I, I don't know. I don't know if that's says like the person that I want to be anymore. Like, you know, I, I don't want, I don't want to engage in conflict. I don't look, I'm not dying to be a reunion host, baby. I'm not dying for it. I'm not begging for it. And I think a lot of people, they enjoy the thrill of telling me that it'll never happen for me. So yes, I'm not dying for it. I, I love my TV recaps because I get to truly share my thoughts of the show in question. I mean, being a reunion host, like for example, my player, I remember people were going off saying my player didn't ask all the right questions. And in my head, I was like, but guys, there are so many things that are chopped and changed that we don't know if my player actually did the job effortlessly well. And I believe that he did. I believe that my player is a perfect reunion host for all the franchises. I believe he's got that Andy Cohen thing to him. It's almost like they really kind of building that whole imagery and that's good. And that's really good. But uh, I started realize, realizing very quickly on that, especially on Twitter, that people are, people are enjoying kind of like digging at the things that I, that I really want and I really desire. So I don't know. I took a step back from TV recaps for a little bit. And I also took a step back because I felt like if I did a TV recap shortly after that whole interaction on Twitter, I was going to go off. I was going to go off because I was going to be on some, well, then in that case, get seated. Welcome to the party. <laughs> so I, I then, I just had to compose. I had to understand that not everybody's going to take kindly to my words. And as much as I should expect them not to take that to heart because it's entertainment, I should be able to not take it to heart either. So I will be doing the TV recaps, but I just took a break from watching it. I just felt like the Real Housewives of Devon was becoming so toxic every single week. Every single week something's happening. Every single week something's fighting. The ladies are a lot more mean-spirited this, this season. Um... It's, it's just become like this like flustering week after week after week of like toxicity. And I knew that if I had given TV recaps, 
I probably would have inflated that toxicity. So I was just like, let me just watch the whole thing. Let me just watch the whole thing because when I did episode one, two, three, I was going off the context of episode one, two, three. And then I was like, you know what? Fuck it. I'm going to watch all the episodes and then I'll share my true thoughts. But then my subbies want me to release an episode after episode after episode. So I need you guys to decide. You either think I'm biased and you still watch the recaps or you like the recaps because I actually am giving my, my opinion, which is what recaps are, my opinion. Or I don't know, guys. So we're going to need to find a common ground here. I do appreciate all the people that did actually say that they think I am capable of being a reunion host because I really do watch these shows. I really do immerse myself in these women and their feelings. And I try by all means, even in what people consider biasness, to really look at both sides of the coin. So I'm actually going to do two re TV recaps today. I'm going to do Durban and I'm going to do Mommy Club. And I think that now that I've watched about six, seven episodes of each season... I'll be able to give a well-rounded approach now that I've watched. You know what I mean? It's still going to be biased though. And I just honestly want to tell you that if you feel like I don't deserve to be a reunion host, I just want to tell you right now, we don't care. Like, <laughs> we don't care. Like, we really don't care. Like, the last time I cared about anything Twitter said, I was probably still gunning for 100,000 subscribers. So... When you stop caring what a toxic platform like Twitter has to say, your life will be better because there are so many things that Twitter told me I wasn't going to do and I've done each and every one of them, except the radio part though. <laughs> we get in there. And the reunion host part though, we get in there. So yeah, that's why I took a step back. I also didn't want to be overly toxic and overly mean. I did take that constructive criticism. Some people said I went in a bit too hard. I can acknowledge that part. And I told myself that, now, lady, you need to you need to pipe down, baby. Pipe, take it down, switch it down, and give a, a thorough analysis without, without really tagging at anybody's emotions. So that's why I've decided to take a step back watch the show and now i can be able to give my full and honest opinion you know what i mean so that's essentially why i did that but anyway i'm not going to ramble too much about that we are going to start by going to eastgate because i want us to go get a fitness gear outfit for tomorrow now the kellogg's brand has told me how they would like the whole thing to be structured it's going to be really cool full of like cool activities like yoga boot camp and we're going to be trying some new products so i'm just gonna go and look for a cute outfit so that I can wear and then we're gonna go do my lashes and then we'll come back and do like a little cute unboxing before I do my hair install so without rambling too much which I already did because this is my channel like, without rambling too much we're gonna go to Eastgate and we're gonna go find an outfit so yeah let's go. okay guys so I am in the car on the way to Eastgate right now and to be really honest with you guys, I'm running on about three, four hours of sleep. I've been having a tough time sleeping. I think I'm really anxious about tomorrow's event. It is going to be all the way in Mulder's Drift and I need to be there by 7 o'clock in the morning. And I'm just really anxious. I'm, I'm really... Every time something big happens like this, I feel my stomach go into a knot. And having to just kind of prepare for that moment for that energy for that zest it's always quite a scary thing but there was a very good friend of mine who told me that if you don't get nervous then something isn't right you know because if you go into it thinking like oh i'm gonna ace this i'm gonna be so good i'm perfect usually it ends up being um the exact opposite outcome so i do believe that whenever i do get nervous it really kind of heightens the need to do really really well so i have had trouble sleeping just prepping for this day getting my notes together getting everything that i need together and also if agencies could pay us that would be fantastic i've been having what felt like the longest fight with one of these agencies that i was working with and they were supposed to pay me end of february 
and they gave us the runaround for what felt like five years you know um it's been it's been a nightmare to say the least so i am grateful to all the brands that do adhere to their payment terms uh do adhere to their payment dates and do adhere to the end of the bargain because a lot of the time especially with a lot of the brands that i've worked with as of late they have very very big demands and when it's time to actually meet us halfway as creators we're constantly met with a lot of excuses and so forth so it's been quite it's been quite the oh, quite the journey actually it's been quite quite a situation to just kind of get everybody to pay and you know get on the right side of things and yeah it's just been taking a lot of my energy and like i said i've just been in a very different space right now where i've been more career focused where i've been building the brand that i've dreamed in my head for a really really long time and now that that brand is coming to fruition i'm really just very concerned with ensuring that nothing goes wrong and everything goes the way that i've envisioned it in my head so yeah it's been quite a, a couple of sleepless nights it's been me you know started wearing less and going out for a glasses of whiskey on the dance floor hanging with some dude he's never seen before yeah guys and from a love life perspective i think i finally detached from all of my exes even my recent one i think i finally let go of the illusion that me and this one particular ex were going to be together again because i think i just ah yeah 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 i pay i pay i'm well I think I just kept going back and forth with this one particular ex of mine. Um, they, there is a lot of love there, but I just realized that I deserve so, so much better than what I've been given and what I've been reciprocated or like what's been reciprocated to me. I think I deserve so, so much better. And I don't know, man, a couple of things had to happen for me to see that I'm not being loved the way that I deserve to be loved and no amount of forgiveness and understanding and being a cool girl and loving someone will make them change and love you the way you deserve to be loved. Uh, we're dealing with a lot of broken people out here. People are broken. People are walking around with a lot of sadness, a lot of anger, a lot of resentment in their hearts. And you can only carry so much before it starts to drain you as a person. And I feel like that's been a lot of the people in my space. I've cut out another friend of which I'll tell that story time. <laughs> hey, hey, Sana. A lot of things have just happened, a lot of revelations, which is funny because my tarot reading did say that sooner or later, the serpents in the grass would be revealed. And they have been. It's been one hell of a roller coaster. I don't even know how I got over it because it was a long term friendship. But I guess when I tell the story time and I make peace with what has happened, I'll be able to move without feeling like, ooh, still harboring that get out, the get out child. Yeah, so I, I've had to do a lot of cleaning from the inside out, cleaning from who's in my circle and who's not and kind of just really dealing with all the negativity that I've allowed to fester in my personal capacity also dripping into my work capacity you know when you're sad all the time and you you are constantly gaslit you're constantly emotionally manipulated you wake up every day feeling like geez when does it get better and I met someone who just reminded me that, you know, life is about living. And if there are certain people in your space who don't appreciate you, respect you, love you, care for your feelings, then those people should have no place in your life. And that's where I am personally with certain people. And yeah, I just, I feel different. I feel like I'm in a, in, in a different place and I can process things a lot more differently because I wasn't someone who was good with processing things and letting people go 
and I feel like it had a lot to do with my abandonment issues but now I'm just like actually stuff you I've been a good friend to you I've been a good partner to you and if you're not gonna reciprocate that then I ain't got no business having any sort of relations with you whether platonic or personal you know so yeah that's just mentally where I've been and there was a whole lot of self-awareness that needed to be done there was a whole lot of self-reflection that needed to be done but now that the self-reflection is done now that i don't have the sort of harboring hatred towards myself now i can actually move like the bitch that i know that i am and i am that bitch mind you as of late i've been feeling like i'm that bitch you know and i am and the imposter syndrome was finally falling off like a cloak like an invisible cloak now I know that if you dislike me, you don't dislike me because of my inadequacy. You dislike me because of yours. You understand? Maybe you might dislike me because you feel like my personality is not for you. That's also cool. That's good and all fine and shit. I'm good with that. I'm fine. So yeah, that's just where I've been. And I've made peace with a lot of things that have been happening. I've given it up all to God. And I've allowed myself to just focus more on me and not more on others and also guys i just want to say like i feel like people as of late especially on social media i've been watching things that have been happening over the past couple of days and how people don't they don't expect people to change or they don't want to forgive people when people want to change and i just don't understand how that operates like if someone makes a mistake and someone is ready to change parts of themselves and is in a different place why aren't they given grace i feel like a lot of men are given so much grace than women are we've seen men make mistakes and repent and all of a sudden it's yeah man ugh, you know yeah man you know so, some things are really unforgivable but there are certain elements or certain people that i've seen constantly be lambasted for wanting to change and wanting to be different versions of themselves and i just don't understand why people don't give that room that consideration for growth that people grow you understand people grow people outgrow their bad habits people outgrow their bad uh, characteristics people outgrow those things and i just wish social media was a lot more receptive to that but i can guarantee you one of two things ain't nobody who's making money that cares what people on twitter have to say i can assure you maybe i'm one of the very few <laughs> i'm probably one of the very few people who cares what certain Twitter people have to say? And even that's also falling off. Like, I care, but do I really care? Nah. Nah. You ain't changing the price of my money. You ain't affecting my, my bank account. I really don't care if you think that my voice is too irritating for you. I don't care if you think that I'm too loud. I don't care if you feel like I'm too biased. It's, it's gotten to that point where, like, if you really want to succeed in your career and if you really want to excel, Twitter is the one place where I would suggest a lot of content creators really consider letting go of keep it as like a platform for work but don't actually don't actually engage don't be a part of twitter that's my only advice for the day so anyway let's go to East let's get my damn outfit yeah all right y'all we're here so because i can't vlog anymore i'm probably just gonna vlog when we get to nike so let's go <laughs> Okay. Oh, this is useful. You should know I need to get a night pro. <laughs> Act like you've been here before, baby. Oh, that one is cute. Look at that. Alright. Yeah, there. Oh, we did it, Daddy. Yo, guys, wait a second. Okay, again, I hear. Oh, we take a cane, we take a we take a Hi, white tea. Look at guys. I need to find a, a cute outfit in here and I'm gonna get MC for some fitness thing. And I don't want to about it. Show me, there's your car. That purple one, AI at 3000. I can't believe it. Okay. 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 So we're gonna try on this purple two piece and see how that goes. Mara, what if about our son? Okay, get going, mm -hmm. But I'm saying, what is it like a like a like a, like a jacket or like a crop something? Um, yeah, like maybe something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We've got a purple in front. 
Okay. Okay, let me just buy this three piece for now. Alright, here's the deal. I'm buying this three piece for now because this girl bullied me into buying it. And then under armor, check it. Maybe take a purple. It could buy this side. If not, I'll probably come back and buy this tacky. <laughs> Shut up, guys. Okay, Nike, one side. Now, I'm gonna check under armor. See if there's anything I can get there. Ay, mga why eo say ofara e na? What is this, honey? Amara, you didn't offer me this one. <laughs> ah, what more, Amara? She didn't offer me this one. This is more like. How about the haka? And the egg is super in seven. Then I might as well buy the sneaker. Yeah, that was true. I might as well buy the key. All right, I'll check it under Amara. All right, outfit gotten. Hotel Trivago. Now it's time for. I just want to check on the armor. Apparently, on the armor, we saw some good shit. Oh, look at that purple sneaker. Oh. I'm gonna lie, Jenny. Hey, some Content. Oh, look, they've even got purple. Yeah. Ah, I know what's fine. We're going to be in the end. Marvin, let's keep a list. Because I just bought a purple like fit from Nike. That's enough, that's enough sports we're buying for the day. That's enough, it's getting ridiculous. <laughs> this guy made me buy and I didn't come here to buy. <laughs> but it's kind of bad. It's <laughs> Thousand rand for tight for stuffy when I catch under armor. Yeah, that's a lovely friend. So this top we're doing this top. Yeah, I think it's hot. I don't mind the loose but Thank you. Thank you. So now you cook. Yeah, send it to you. I'm telling a link and it's me at the end. This is a small. Lale and I that I got was a small. Yeah, and the one is a small salad. Salah is quite, yeah. Alrighty, girlies. We just only bought like five pieces of outfit and we just already spent like 4.5. I want to vomit blood. Okay, I'm going straight home now. <laughs> Don't even ask me anything about anything. I'm going home. I can't look at Adidas. I got to look at I'm not want anything more happy. I am here by Gwazi, uh, Sinezi Port Lash Bar. I'm about to install my lashes, y'all know how it rocks, y'all know how we do, so 
I'll probably just leave this part out the vlog because I think I've installed my lashes twice in the last two vlogs so there's probably no need for that so yeah guys let me just go and store my lashes and then i am craving sushi all over monday so now i want sushi and i'm probably gonna stop by yamitsuki or i'll probably stop by um fire room because i'm in bedford view so let me go do my lashes and let's chat around lunchtime hey yo man um i'm back in the south i am so depleted i am so depleted but anyway after I got my lashes done, I just drove back here and now I want to have a quick lunch. Initially, I wanted to have sushi at Yamitsuki, but as much as I love the sushi there, I just feel like they're a bit overpriced. They are quite overpriced. I think if you are someone who's very price sensitive, you're probably better off going to Fire Room because Fire Room has better prices in comparison to Yamitsuki. But I do like the sushi at Yamitsuki, it's super fresh. But anyway, I'm here at Lupa because it's close to my house and at least i know right after that i can just go home and relax so i just want some i just want to get some pizza and some wine and i just want to eat because i haven't really eaten anything and then i am going home and i'm so back and serious about going home and yeah i've got my notes for tomorrow so i just want to have my pizza i want to have like my undivided attention and I also don't want to go to butcher boys because butcher boys they're going to end up giving me free stuff. Sanmanan, Sanmanan, Sanmanan. Jani, long time no see. Nyan Dosh, I need to sing Yangal. In right one. No, no, yeah. I'm milling in cards here sometimes. I want to just for like, yeah, just for a character building. Yo. So, so I'm going to go to the pen too. Yeah. I'm just gonna sit just and then I'm gonna like um, your food menu because I'm not gonna have a table and then your wine list and finally you have one I've changed my hey 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 I just want a wine served in a glass by the glass so got my notes here Oh, and it's some little 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 single shot espresso. Single shot. Got my notes here. Um, gonna get some work done. I want a pizza, but I also want to just make some notes while I have some lunch. And then we're gonna head back home, show you guys what I bought, do that little unboxing. I don't know if I'm even gonna do time to do that. And then Gum's gonna come do my hair. So, yeah, I've got jam packed evening. No, but who's supposed to take care of it? Me. That's not happening. Shut up, guys. I'm not going to take care of that damn kid. Shut up, Belina. Shut up. Pajak. Guys. Shut up. Shut See you guys soon. Guys, I'm sick and tired. I am so tired. I am so exhausted. I can barely keep my eyes open. And the worst part of it all is that I still need to go home and I still need to work and I still need to do an unboxing. So what I'm probably gonna do now is get home, make a gulp, a strong one. And then after making my gulp, what I'm gonna do after that is now one thing about you, Tarek, I keep at like Sarah, but Bum Jim. Hey, Sana. Hey, Mulder's Drift. You better be good to me. Let's go home. Let's go home, yo. See you next morning. Morning, guys. 
it is 4 30 in the morning and my whole nose is blocked i feel like sugar honey iced tea and i just need to make a coffee and prep for the day so i'm gonna do all of that and i'll probably talk to you guys within the hour because i need to be in Malta's drift by seven so yeah let me get the day ready i'm actually here give it to the wrong it's a 7 a.m. and I'm ready to MC. Do a line, do a line, do a line. Good thing, hi, hi, how are you? Good thing, guys. Can I look at your head, Aren't we all hyped up on coffee and a couple of Red Bulls? Not even. <laughs> okay, guys, I'm here and I needed to get here at like 7 in the morning because we need to do some sort of like a run through. And I don't know how I'm supposed to do all of that and vlog. But uh, I'm going to try my best and be committed. So I'll just show you a little bit of like the backdrop of what things look like. But other than that, we need to just kind of walk. Shit, I should probably take a bag. I don't know why I didn't take a sports bag. Like, I didn't actually think this through. If we're being like 110% honest, I didn't actually think this through. But. Uh, I suppose the good thing is that that's what you do for a living is I do my best as summers. So let's hope everything goes according to plan. Um, so I couldn't vlog this morning because I was running late and because I do live quite far from this venue because I'm in the south and this venue is all the way in the west. I couldn't do like a kind of update this is what's happening this is what we're doing so we're just gonna walk in have a look see behind the scenes and yeah let's have a good day being an MC <laughs> yes where's everybody going who about that who about that guys who about that Well, it's now time for lunch. Alright, guys. <laughs> <laughs> Do not right, guys. mock me like this. Hi. Welcome to my vlog. Click the subscribe button <laughs> and like. Don't forget to like, comment. <laughs> I love you so much, <laughs> Chef Ika. That salad looks so great. It looks so good. So we're going down there now to go, obviously eat because the girl is hungry. The wig is lifting. Girl had a long ass day, so. Let's go eat and enjoy what's left of our morning. And mind you, it's still morning. Give us living. <laughs> Hi guys. What? Hi guys. Welcome, welcome to, to our YouTube channel. <laughs> <laughs> so today we have been at the Kellogg's. Um, the Lola launch. The Lola launch. Now, what is the fresh something? And we're Kellogg's.
Get a chess chess Good morning, everybody. My morning coffee. Starting with the morning rot. Top of the morning, black coffee, no sugar, no milk. Nothing that's going to make you gain weight, I suppose. Okay, welcome back to another day of my vlog. You guys obviously know that yesterday I was at the Kellogg's event and I was the MC. And you guys obviously saw all of that kind of come into play. I don't know the content that was recorded because obviously I wasn't really in control of my camera much. But I just want to unpack how the event went and what the event meant for me. I think... Personally, big shout out to the Orchard on 25 team. All the events that they've been doing have been outstanding. And outstanding is like an understatement. I think when it comes to handling and doing really good events, Duma Collective and Orchard on 25 are literally at the very top. So they handled the Kellogg's event at ground and the setup was impeccable. The day was amazing having the yoga with Drake to start off with. My body is still suffering from all the positions that Drake tried to put us in, but it made me realize all the more that I really want to get into yoga. I really want to kind of, you know, um, do more yoga classes because I can feel the effects on my core. I really can, and even in my lower back. So that was really cool. And then we handled a boot camp with Zinke and Saibo. Now... I remember when I walked in yesterday, I have such a bad memory that it's something that I need to work on because there were a lot of influences there yesterday that I knew them. Like for example, Timna was there, you know, Libo was there. And those are people that I obviously interact with on a day-to-day -day basis. Like Libo is my friend, right? But then I saw Zinke and I'm like, where do I know this girl from? Where do I know her from? I know you. But I didn't want to obviously say like, baby, where do I know you from? So then obviously it comes out that Zintla and Saibo are a fitness couple. So uh, Saibo is her partner, a long-term partner, and um, he's a personal trainer in his capacity, and she is like an award-winning fitness content creator. So throughout the day, I'm just like, babe, I know you, but wait. Then I take a snap with her, and I'm like, okay, I'm going to follow you, love you, bye. Go on my Instagram, realize I'm already following it. Like... <laughs> I'm already following her and I'm just like fuck it's Z fitness junkie stop stop calling us with your names we don't care about your names we care about your insta handles don't tell me that your name is you know Sipoguche when you've saved yourself as CC on my Instagram like honestly dude how do you expect me to remember that I don't Jesus just be like me use your name completely but anyway I then realized, oh no, man, I've been following her for a while because when I got into the whole um, weight loss journey of mine, she was at the forefront of the people that I began following. I follow a lot, a lot, a lot of fitness girlies and I love their content. I've realized that Instagram content doesn't really move me. Like all the luxurious, oh, I've always got a Van Cleef, oh, I've always got a Celine, oh, I've always got this. I mean, I get jealous, but I'm not really moved about it anymore. Nothing about that entertains me or or keeps me engaged so because i'm really obsessed with fitness right now and i'm really obsessed with seeing my body change i follow a lot of fitness girlies i don't follow the guys but i follow the women and i'm just really obsessed with things that bring me some sort of you know i don't want to find myself constantly having to sub a well on the tl hey but yeah so the instagram aesthetic doesn't really move me anymore doesn't really move me. Like, I love all the girlies that I follow, but they've kind of fallen off the wayside for me. They they don't... I, I feel like they don't bring anything outside of that aesthetic, that Instagram aesthetic, which is also not real. So that's the thing about Instagram. It's created this very false narrative about the lives that we're living when we're not. Everything is just smoke and mirrors. Everything is a mirage. Like, everything is just nothing all at the same time. So for me, your Z Fitness Junkies, your Grace Motswanas, your Sibs Jollies, your... The, the fitness girlies, man, your tinners, like, those are the people whose content I'm high-key enjoying right now. But anyway, I see collab again. It was an amazing event. I had so much fun. I got into my bag and I realized that, yep, 
Yep, I need to MC more often. I really... And you know what's funny? I swear to God I must have manifested this in varsity because I said I wanted to be a motivational speaker like Richard Branson. Like, who the hell said he's a motivational speaker? I mean, yes, he's a plenty, but... Una no speaker, no motivation guy, I guess. No? Kupala skanchacha, ne? Kupala skanchacha for my sake. Anyway, so the day before yesterday, I got home and I said that I would do like a, a little bit of an unboxing and I never got around to doing it because I was really, really tired. I was running on a very small amount of sleep, like very few hours, and I just got home and I passed out. So I really want to just do this unboxing and then close it off, close off this vlog, and then I probably will do another vlog. I'm getting back into the vlogging spirit and I also want to do all my sit down videos today. So first things first that we need to talk about is the Under Armour two-piece that I got. Now you guys obviously saw the three-piece that I got from Nike because I wore it at the event yesterday. But this is the Under Armour two-piece that I got and I absolutely, absolutely love these cycling shorts because you guys know I cycle a lot. I love them and then I also got um, this top from Under Armour. Um, this was quite pricey, just these two pieces alone was 2100 so I didn't know Under Armour was that pricey. I just saw everybody wearing it and I assumed that it's not bad. Anyway, I guess Sana's like, it was pricey as fuck. I was not expecting that price. But anyway, I love, 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 love buying these. I think just buying gym gear alone for this event cost me about 5000 bucks. Anyway. The next thing that I wanted to unbox, luckily when I got home yesterday, I had ordered uh, shades from Bonabai Wednesday at 3 o'clock in the morning. Yes, because my sleeping patterns are just get out. So they arrived yesterday. I ordered them the day before yesterday, early morning. So I ordered them early morning and then they arrived. I ordered two pairs because she had recently launched this other pair called Rhea. And then all the other pairs that she's had on her page. I know she had the Lissetti pair that I had the black ones. But then this other nigga stole them from me. He steals them and then he has the audacity to wear them in front of me. Like, ugh, kettle. But anyway, so let's just... Debut them. These are the Lissetti 3.0s. I also saw Didi wearing these and I absolutely just got like the urge to buy them again. Like I really love sunglasses that aren't too dark because I need to see you because I can't see. So these are just an accessory. I'm not trying to not see you but I am trying for you to not see me in my spirit. Don't look in my hat. You know what I mean? But I want to be able to see you. These are the ones you can wear at Groove at night. I don't want to hear these old dark Prada where you can't see shit. We don't even know if your eyes are rolling back. We don't even know if you're having a seizure. Like, bruh. But these are my favorite ones. These are the ones that actually made me purchase at 3 o'clock in the morning. I got the Rias. Um, these are the ones that debuted. And I wanted these aviators for a really, really long time. I saw... I initially saw them from Singmobile, but the the the... Color scheme that Singmobile had were the brown ones. And I also noticed that Michali also had the same color scheme. I think that brand gave Singmobile and Michali those shades or they bought them. What, that's what I'm saying. So, Born Up by Wednesday for me is a trusted online site for shades. And I wasn't going to take the chance on an Instagram page that I've never seen before. So, I was just like, it's not happening. So, I bought from Born Up by Wednesday and baby... Yeah. Meh. Uh-huh. Meh. Meh. Yes. I could even just so much. Yeah, friend. And what did he say after you said that? Wow, friend. That's what he said. Don't take a picture. So that's what I got from Bonobai Wednesday. I think I'm definitely going to wear these ones today in the car. I really want to go to Big Mouth. I want to go eat some good sushi. I want to go pat myself on the back. For the hard work that I've been putting in when it comes to my career. And then last but not least, unboxing that I want to do. Because you guys know me, I don't do luxury unboxings anymore. I feel like they are very, 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 very tone deaf. Alexander. Wait. Anyway, the shoes aren't in the box. So hence why I'm just showing you the box. But the shoes aren't in the box, right? 
here are the shoes. Ah! I love yes, yes, sis. Yes, sis. You know, it's so funny because I found out that Alexander Wang got cancelled because apparently he's a sexual predator and stuff. And I only found the shit out after I bought these these heels. And you're a fake, phony, fucking fucked up human being. But wow. Wow, it's always, it's always the creepazoids that create some of the best work. You know, it's always the creepazoids. So this is a wraparound strappy heel and I like it because it's very cushiony on the inside and as you can see, I'm just gonna show you guys up close. You can see that it's a very cushiony material, cushiony here, so it does really protect the leg. The heel is not too high, which is even perfect. And then you've just got the Alexander Wang detailing all around. I absolutely love this shoe. I have never bought a high-end um, high heel before. No, 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 I'm lying. I have. I have red bottoms, uh, but uh, so Kate's. I have so Kate's, and I have the other one. Oh, I'm such a liar. And I also have YSLs. But, okay, I have a lot of high-end heels, actually. I'm actually a liar. I completely forfeit that. But anyway, uh, when I was never going to buy these. My friend, my best friend, went to Hydraulics on the Saturday. And she was like, friend, look at the heels that I got on the Sunday. While she was installing me before I went to Gonka. And everything in my spirit was like, Nelly, you go buy those shoes. So right after my install, I rushed to Sanson. I got the shoes. I did my makeup. I went to Gonka. And I was inside. You understand? Sometimes you must just, you must just make very indecisive decisions. You know, sometimes you must just, you must just fuck around, spend your money. You guys know offense, eh? Um, his, his Twitter handle is offense, is it, eh? Every single time I ask, must I buy this? He'll be like, yes. Yes. I'm like, offense, dude, you're not going to be there when it's time to pay my bills. And he's like, you only live once. YOLO, bitch. <laughs> and then now, mind you, I just bought the Louis Vuitton sneakers. So I was just like, eee. But, fuck it. Fuck it so very much. You know? So, yeah, I'm really, I'm really proud of the strides that I've made. I'm really happy with the fact that I went against all buyer's remorse. Oh, fun fact, I didn't feel one ounce of buyer's remorse when I bought these. Not even one. Nothing in me thought, <sighs> not, nothing. The Louis Vuitton sneakers, I was just like, these, nada, next, nothing, down. Till today, I have no regrets. So those are cute. And they're not too high, very comfortable. I lost it all night in them. Yeah, they were very comfortable. You obviously feel the effect on your heel as per a high heel. If you're not someone who generally wears a lot of heels, but they were perfectly fine for me. So, yeah, guys, let me get the rest of my day started. I'm going to end this vlog right here. Thank you guys so much for all your criticism. Thank you guys so much for all your patience and your understanding in terms of, you know, me releasing content. I am coming back on the platform and I am going to be bringing you guys all the entertainment you guys wanted for me. But until then, I love you guys so much and I will see you guys in the next YouTube video.